Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Today, I'm going to show you how to uh, degree in a cam. We're going to use the uh, Kohler Command engine right here that we've been working on. And we're going to go from start to finish on this. Uh, from setting everything up, clear up to actually degreeing in the cam. So, um, just something I think needs to be put out there and uh, hopefully it helps somebody. So. Let's get to uh, working on this. y'all uh, start everything out when you buy your cam you're gonna get a cam card uh, all of them look different this this is just how Hackman does his um, but it has all the information you need to get your cam degreed in um, uh, they're basically they'll set up uh, across the top line here uh, this is your this will be like your intake and exhaust what the lift and everything is this is not my cam to give out those numbers, so we've got them covered up. Um, this is what they've spec'd it out for. Um, you know, the intake starts opening uh, before top dead center at 26 degrees. Uh, same thing with the exhaust, you know, and it closes, tells you where it closes. Their degree of separation on the cam. Uh, this is then the next line here, and this is what we're worried about here and with the red. Uh, your tap it setting, your lifter setting. Uh, you want your intake to be at ten thousandths. Uh, before uh, total degree, you know, top, you know, before top is at dinner, uh, at zero, uh, zero, you know, at zero lift. So ten thousandths there. And then when we actually degree the cam in, these are the important numbers, and. When you're, you want the intake to start opening at 22 degrees before top dead center, and we'll show I'll show you how to get that. And then you know the closing, uh, we we're not worried about that. We're just worried about where it starts opening at. And then it also, um, you know, and it tells you what you know what your your valve spring required. That's their part number. You know, and the assembled height of the valve spring. That means when it's in the engine. You know, it's got to be 1.8 inches. Um, the uh, in initial timing for your ignition, um, they want between 32 and 33 degrees uh, before top before top dead center. So, this, I mean, it looks confusing, but it's super easy. Um, you know, uh, it, but this is all the information you need to get your cam set in place. So, um, that's very important. Uh, if you buy a used cam, make sure that somebody gives you this, and hopefully it's the right paperwork for that cam. Um, Mr. Heckman down there, or Heckman, there's a cam number. Every cam has its own individual number. Um, as long as you have that, you can call down there, and he can get you all this information. So, all right, there's that. Um, now we'll show you what... Uh, tools and stuff you need to do this job. Alright y'all, one of the first things you're going to need, you're going to need a degree wheel and this is just a, a cheap one uh, bought at the parts store. Uh, I think it's like a seven and a half inch. Um, you can use any one you want. I will tell you, the bigger it is, the easier it is to, you, to work with because the separation between the degrees is greater um, so, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to use, but I've used this one for years and don't have any problems with it. Um, they're fairly cheap, so you need to get that and a way to mount it. I had an adapter made up to go on the flywheel side of the crank. Um, just, a, it has a step on it. It has like a rubber washer, a regular washer, and the crank bolt, or the flywheel bolt goes on and, you know, 
locks this thing in place. You do not want it to, to be able to turn on the crank. So, And then you'll need some kind of a pointer. This is just a wire that I've you can mount it anywhere. You can come off the coils. I've come off the coil before and come over and down. Um, just something that's static, you know, won't move. And, uh, you know, uh, to, to get your degree in right. And it don't matter where this, this doesn't, zero doesn't have to be pointing right at the cylinder. Um, it can be pointing anywhere. It can be pointing down, down here at the bottom. That does not matter. Um, right now <laughs> okay yeah the, uh, the other thing you're gonna need some sort of a dial indicator um, mine is a well lighting's bad on this side of the engine but uh, mine's a digital harbor freight I've used it for years it's good and accurate you're gonna need that um, because what we're gonna do is well we'll get into that later um, when you're doing these Kohler command engines um, let me get a light set up on this side so you guys can see a little better. All right, y'all. You can see a little better now. Uh, there's my dial indicator. You'll need a magnetic base or some sort of a base to, to make it rigid so it doesn't move. Um, I've made up this plate here. Bolts on where the valve cover goes on. It's nice and big. And when you're setting this up, you want your pointer to be in line with the, your push rod um, you can see there I mean mine's off just a hair but I'll adjust it a little bit when we get closer to it but you want that plane to be as close as possible to the you know same as what the, the push rod is so <coughs> and centered on your lifter um, now uh, when you're working on the commands, you'll need one of these fixtures. This is from Midwest Super Cub. There's other people that sell them, um, but it is essential because it keeps your cam and crank lined. Uh, it lets you rotate it. It doesn't let everything move. And uh, the only thing, only drawback on this one and all the other ones I've seen is usually there's five bolts in the cam. The fifth one's back here, so... I take that bolt completely out um, that way it doesn't hang up and it just simpler um, the four will hold it you know when we go to degree in I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about um, so yeah uh, that's the basics of what you're gonna need um, so uh, all right oh uh, make life easier too you need some lightweight valve springs or lightweight springs these just come from the hardware store um, they're just I mean you know you can it holds tension on the valve and the rocker but it's not so much that you know it won't it's hard to because you got to turn this you're gonna have to turn this cam slightly um, and like I said I'll show you that um, so uh, yeah uh, yeah, okay. Uh, that should be everything you need all tool-wise, other than your general hand tools to, you know, for nuts and bolts and stuff like that. So, all right, let's uh, let's get started on uh, degreeing this thing in. All right, y'all, before we can actually degree the cam in, we need to get our degree wheel set to top dead center, you know, lined up on top dead center. And... There's a couple different ways to do that. Um, when I do it, generally, um, because I've got to pull the head off anyways to put those lighter valve springs in, I'll use my dial indicator and uh, uh, set it on top of the piston, rotate the piston, and you'll see the numbers go up and down. Uh, when, it, when it reaches its... Um, I guess max you know lift you know and then it starts dropping off and back it up you can rock it back and forth and get that you know the max amount of lift I guess for better lack of better terms 
that is top dead center on that cylinder. Um, I always use number one. You can use two. It doesn't matter, but because um, these are equal engines. When you get that, you can tighten this down and get your wire and get it set on zero and you're good to go. The other way to do it is use a piston stop that goes in through the um, spark plug hole down here and it's just a adjustable stop like it says goes down into the bolt or a spark plug hole and you can adjust it in and out <coughs> excuse me uh, the way you do that is on especially on these coolers you can look down through there and you can see the piston coming up I usually bring it up and kind of watch you know get a visual top dead center and then I back it back down just a little bit crank that stop in lock it off and then reverse rotate your engine well while you have your while you have your uh, degree wheel on here get that in bring that piston up against that stop see where you're at on your degree wheel okay and then rotate the engine almost a you know 360 degrees because the piston will go down and it'll come back up and it'll actually be very careful doing this don't turn it too hard bring it up and let it contact and see where your indicator is at on the on the time on the degree wheel and then halfway between those two uh, degrees you know because if you're gonna, you're gonna rotate the motor this way you know it's gonna you know come over here and back halfway between those two marks will be top dead center so um, like I said two e two ways to do it easy sounds complicated but it's not just when you're using the piston stop like I said be very careful don't force the engine and don't spin it over too hard um, I have seen or heard of people damaging their pistons by doing that but uh, you know I have I have means to do both method methods um, but you know like I said being as I have the head off anyways to put these valve springs in uh, I just do with the with the uh, uh, degree wheel and you can use a piston stop on the same way it just goes across between a couple bolt hole or the head bolt holes with a center pin you know multiple ways of doing it um, but that's just the two ways that I that I do it so all right uh, I've already got this one all set up ready to go so the next thing we need to do is to uh, rotate the engine to uh, it was 22 degrees before top dead center and you know I've got little arrows on here that show me which way which way this engine is going to rotate plus it also has on here you know intake valve opens before top dead center you know so and this this is for an automotive engine not a small engine so it's already got you know it's going to be somewhere between 20 and 60 on automotive but you know, uh, we're gonna. I'll get the camera set up and show you exactly what uh, you know what we're doing here. So, all right, y'all. Uh, like I said before, I've got this engine set at top dead center, number one cylinder, and uh, we want to go. The engine will rotate this way. That's the way you know this engine rotates. So. We want to rotate our crank before top dead center. That means this way, before you know, before it gets to the top dead center. So um, you just want to bring it around, and we want 22 degrees. And my head might get in you guys' way, but. There's 22 degrees before top dead center. I bumped my dial indicator here. Okay, we are at 22 degrees before top dead center because the engine is going to come this way. So it's going to spark, or I'm sorry, the valve is going to start opening here and continue opening 
in this direction. So there we go. Um, like I said, the engine does rotate this way. Got it set at 22 degrees. So, all right, now we need to adjust the cam. So uh, we'll get over here and I'll get you on the other side and get the light set up and uh, we'll show you what we need to do on that. All right, y'all. Um, sorry, the lighting is not going to be the greatest, uh, but my light died, so um, we're trying to use some natural lighting. But, um, anyways, uh, when you per first put your cam in, you want to make sure when you put it in, you rotate it till you know it's just touching the, you know, just pushing up on the rocker. You know, because you've already set the lash at ten thousandths. Um, well, make sure it goes up and touches uh, when you're at 23 degrees. So, uh, the way I do it is I take all these bolts out and rotate the cam, cam by hand with the gears set, you know, in place in the crank until it comes up and just touches the, the lifter. And make sure my holes, you know, are lined up and we need the slot, you know, to be able to, you know, rotate the cam this way. Uh, so you want your bolt hole to be at this end of the slot. So uh, I've got this all set in place, ready to go. Got these just loose, these four bolts just loose. We are set at zero. And so I just... Take a pair of pliers. You're not going to hurt this because you're not putting that much pressure on it. Oh, let me get my ratchet down here first. Okay, get my ratchet handy. And then rotate the cam, you know, looking at it clockwise because that's the way it rotates when the motor count runs. And hopefully you guys can see the dial indicator there. We want to bring that up to the 50 thousandths mark. Right there's 50 thousandths. We're gonna rotate that, rotate that. This last one locked in. Okay, so now I need my crank turning tool, which I had laying there. It is and my crank turning tool is just a an old connecting rod uh, with a washer that sticks out in it and it hooks in the uh, the uh, keyway so works really well so all right we're going to rotate the motor over I'm gonna make one full revolution just went through the intake and we're gonna come back back through and we should be at close to top dead center or mark 23 degree mark here let me look at this 22 degree I'm sorry all right 22 degree and I think we're good so um, I'm gonna I'm going to rotate the motor over two or three more times and then we'll do a final adjustment on this thing. So uh, let me shut the camera off. Just I want to go through it a couple more times and uh, just make sure everything's copacetic. So, all right, y'all. I've went through and rotated the motor two or three or four times uh, completely around and I put it back on 22 degrees before top dead center on the uh, degree wheel. And we are at 44 thousandths. So we're going to go ahead and readjust that just a hair. Um, just because that's, I wanna, that's how I want to do it. And it's a good idea to do it a few times because, I mean, there's all, all, always all kinds of stuff. I'm going to re zero my. Okay. 
bring that back up to 50 thousandths. Oh, we're at 55 there. Okay. Fifty-one, forty-eight. Takes a lot of patience to get. Okay. All right. Still at 50. Let's rotate this thing over. All right. Let's go around. There goes our exhaust stroke. And we should be coming right back up to the intake. I'm sorry, that was the compression strip. So. Yep, go around again here. Our intake. Comes our compression, kaboom, exhaust stroke. So, all right. Now we're coming back up on our intake. Yep, there we go, so y'all. So there it is. So awesome. Uh, that's how you degree in a cam. All right, y'all. There you have it. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward kind of explanation on uh, degreeing in a you know aftermarket adjustable cam. Uh, it's not really that hard once you kind of think about it and do it. Um, now, uh, you know, some of the tools, I mean, they're not real expensive tools, probably under a hundred bucks for all the, you know, the dial indicator and the magnetic base and the degree wheel, uh, you know, but it's tools that you have to have to do the job right. Um, uh, and the map, oh, I'm sorry, in the, uh, fixture here too. Um, I don't know how much you're charging for that anymore. Um, but you, you can't do the job without that one. So, um. Uh, it is what it is. Check around. Uh, maybe somebody, one of your buddies or somebody, or somebody local to you has one that you can borrow. Um, you know, they're pretty common nowadays. So, uh, like I said, it's, it's something you have to have to do these engines. You can't, there's no other way to do it. Um, I have seen guys take old closure plates and cut them out and make their own. That's awesome. You know, you can, you know, you can basically you know cut it right above the crank and loop up around the cam and then just cut cut the case off you know from basically here up you know and that would work great too um i just bought that one because you know i didn't have an extra closure plate at the time um down the road i may make one uh see if it works see how it works uh, the only drawback about it is, is you can't get to the end of this cam to be able to rotate it. Um, uh, I don't know how you would do it without that. You know, um, I guess one thing you could do is 
put a longer bolt in one of these holes and use these three and just use that to you know rotate your cam around I'm sure that would work too huh well, maybe that's something we'll have to try if that's something you want to see me try leave me a message down there in the bottom you know we'll uh, we'll try to do it so um, I'm sure I can come up with a closure plate somewhere so anyways I'm rambling on hope you guys learned something and uh, that's all I got for you if you like the video please hit the thumbs up uh, if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button ring the bell get all the notifications you know all this all the stuff um, does help the channel out um, and like I said leave me a comment down below um, I know this is kind of a quick kind of overview didn't really get real real in depth on it but it's not really that hard sounds hard but once you you know once you do it practice a couple times you know a few times it's you know it's not bad at all so appreciate y'all watching and uh, you know keep wrenching and we'll catch y'all on the next one hey y'all uh, I know I said uh, we were gonna end this video but uh, I messed up uh, when we were degrading this cam in um, I noticed I was having a little little difficult time you know getting it dialed in exactly right but it wasn't a big deal I showed what I needed to show about how to do it and everything but uh, yeah the uh, cam card I read the cam card again if you guys can see down here right down here where it says lifter face diameter roller yeah this motor didn't have roller lifters in it had flat tappets that's why I was having a hard time they weren't uh, you know sitting on the cam right so I am gonna redo the timing on it again because I pulled the cam back out and got roller lifters for it and uh, uh, it's gonna it's gonna gonna be fixed the right way um, I'm really glad that uh, we did not start this motor I'm glad I caught it um, not only with the cam being out of time uh, could have bent them valves uh, but with that roll with a flat tap at cam or lifter I'm sorry flat tap at lifter on a roller cam it would have ate the lobes right off of that cam within minutes um, just destroyed that brand new cam so y'all you gotta if you're doing this stuff you got to do it right don't just assume uh, because you'll you'll destroy stuff I mean that's a $700 cam in there um, that's what I was told that it cost um, 10 minutes it would have been trashed so um, it possibly could have trashed the block too with you know the wrong lifters in there if they would have got caught or whatever uh, all kinds of bad stuff could have happened so but I wanted to be uh, up front and honest with y'all uh, I did not catch it until when I was editing the video and uh, this is I'm being shot shooting this now after I'm already editing the video I read on it it said roller and I could have sworn I when I reached up in there and felt they were flat tappets so and it didn't click on me you know I just assumed that they had you know was thinking that it had rollers in it because I knew it was a roller cam but anyways thanks y'all for watching um, I'm gonna end the video now so please like comment subscribe and uh, yeah another thing too is uh, I I'm usually not one to watch analytics but uh, it kind of popped up and uh, over 80 percent of y'all aren't subscribed getting lots of views but y'all aren't subscribing it's free click the subscribe button help me out appreciate y'all catch y'all on the next one